Scattered over northern Europe, England, and the temperate zones of Asia are countless quiet streams and ponds. In the shallows of their clear, fresh waters, the currents flow gently and luxuriant plants stretch their leaves and stems towards the surface and the sun. In this habitat lives a very unusual creature that has chosen to live where there is no air, yet it remains an air-breathing animal. This is the world of the diving spider. The diving spider, with the scientific name Argyroneta aquatica, is the only spider able to live underwater. It can survive here because it carries its own supply of air by forming a bubble over its abdomen where the spider's breathing hole is located. The bubble is held in place by two layers of fine hair. In addition, each of these spiders is able to create small air bells underwater structures where they can store needed oxygen. The spiders build their air bells where there is some protection, such as aquatic plants, to hide them from above. The spider first begins to spin a roof-like web. At the back of the spider's abdomen are six spinnerets. Through them, the silken thread is drawn out. Being almost a sedentary creature, its visual powers are not great, and it must rely on a highly developed sense of touch. It lets out a drag line, fastening it to vegetation as it moves. This will serve as a guide back to the air bell. When the roof is complete, the spider goes to the surface to get air. It tests for the surface with its front legs, turns around, and with a quick scissor-like motion, grasps the air and breaks the top surface tension to form a new bubble. The air is then released under the web it must repeat this maneuver until the air bell is large enough to hold the spider. In the comfort of its new home, the diving spider spends a great deal of time grooming itself. This keeps the spider's body hair free of fungus. Important, since it is the hair which holds the vital air sac to its body. Like other spiders, the diving spider hunts for live food. Aquatic insects are a favorite prey. It can sense nearby prey by vibration on the silken drag lines and must leave the air bell in pursuit of food. Because of poor eyesight, diving spiders usually wait in ambush for prey to come to them. 
Fortunately, they can go for weeks without food. When prey does finally stumble into its grasp, the spider must carry its victim to the air bell. Spiders can't eat in water. The enzymes which digest the food would be washed away. So it settles down in the bell to devour its prey. Spiders are among the oldest living creatures on Earth. During the process of evolution, they were one of the first to leave the water for the land. Only this species has returned and has adapted completely to life underwater. Diving spiders live a solitary life. However, there is occasional aggression when they meet. The nomadic males, unlike other spiders, are larger than the females and hardly ever build their own air bells. Often, a male will drive a female out of the bell, which she has constructed, and take over. During courtship, the male will pursue the female. Often among spiders, the female will kill the male after mating. It is not the case with this species. Nevertheless, he is on guard and keeps his powerful jaws ready to defend himself. Once the female submits to the advances of the male, mating takes place. Now the female creates a special air bell lines it with silk, in which she lays her eggs. All of her energy is now focused on protecting the eggs. Once hatched, the first mission in the life of every spiderling is to get air. Ancient genetic imprints drive them to the surface to collect the vital oxygen. When this has been accomplished, they return to the familiar surroundings of the mother's air bell. But from the moment of emerging, baby spiders are basically independent. They must provide for themselves. In the complicated web of life, in this underwater jungle, are numerous creatures that prey upon the baby spiders. But nature has arranged that many spiderlings will be hatched, so that enough will live to ensure the survival of the species. Now, with her mission in life accomplished, the female faces her greatest natural enemy, fungus. As she grooms, she tries to rid herself of the deadly fungus, which has infested her body hairs. Her vital air sac is shrinking. She can no longer hold air. All of her efforts are futile. Finally, with her air sac gone, the helpless spider has no choice but to climb out of the water to save herself from drowning. With great effort, she moves toward the air and breaks through the surface.
here, she can breathe again. But a diving spider out of water is out of its element. It is not adapted to life here and will not eat. Death is inevitable. Now, at her natural end, she returns to the place where her life began. Nearby, her offspring are busily beginning their new lives. Nature and instinct are guiding them to spin their silken threads, to go to the surface for air, to locate food, and avoid enemies. In this never-ending process of life, each new generation must repeat the patterns of the past. Nature has equipped each creature to do so in its own distinctive way. This, then, is the world of the diving spider, unique among the marvels and mysteries of the animal world.